Hello, my name is Dr. Don Buford. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Dallas, Texas, and I'm the founder and director of the Texas Orthobiologic Institute, where we specialize in using orthobiologics such as platelet-rich plasma and bone marrow concentrate for orthopedic conditions. Uh, the title of this presentation is Using Bone Marrow Concentrate for Glenohumeral Arthritis, and this is a talk that I initially gave at the ninth annual meeting of the Mexican Shoulder and Elbow Society in Cancun in September of 2019. At that meeting, I gave four talks, um, and you can find the handouts to those talks if you're interested at the link at the top of this slide. These are my disclosures. The American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons requires us to disclose any relevant uh, uh, potential conflicts of interest. And so here you can see my list on the left that is up to date. We are active in social media at the Orthobiologic Institute of Texas, and you can see our different um, monikers and usernames for the various platforms. On YouTube, we do have the number six orthopedic channel, and that can be found under the search term Don Buford, MD. So the question for this talk is why consider bone marrow concentrate injections for glenohumeral osteoarthritis? And the simple answer is that we simply do not have a long-term, non-surgical, effective treatment option for the pain and dysfunction that comes from glenohumeral arthritis. There are many injections that clinicians use currently to try and help patients and minimize their dysfunction. We're all very familiar with steroid injections and the, and the potential uh, pros and cons of using that substance. There is visco supplementation. Many clinicians believe in using 12.5% dextrose or some other form of prolotherapy. There are regenerative medicine doctors using platelet-rich plasma in an attempt to minimize patients' pain and dysfunction. There's even been reports of using Botox or botulinum toxin for this indication. In terms of the most commonly used injection, I think that would still be steroids. Um, there's varying uh, formulations, solubilities, and, and length of actions amongst the different steroids that are clinically available. It's interesting to note that the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery, 10 years ago, released a clinical practice guideline in which they were unable to recommend for or against the use of injectable corticosteroids in treating patients with glenohumeral joint osteoarthritis. And the simple reason is that there was no significant level one or even level two evidence that supported using steroids for glenohumeral joint arthritis. Given that there was no high level evidence for it, and given that there are very well-known and very well-documented potential side effects as listed here, the AAOS 10 years ago was unable to recommend for or against steroid use for this glenohumeral joint condition. In the same year, the AAOS was able to give a soft recommendation or what they would consider um, a moderate recommendation for using visco supplementation when treating patients with glenohumeral joint osteoarthritis. It's interesting because this recommendation um, for, for using visco supplementation was made 10 years ago, and even at this point, uh, visco supplementation is still considered um, an off label use when used in the glenohumeral joint. In March of this year, 2019, there was a level four meta-analysis with seven papers. Uh, this was published in the Journal of Shoulder and Elbow Surgery, and it did show uh, statistically significant decreases in the visual analog pain scale at three months and at six months. One of the interesting conclusions in the paper published in March 2019 was that there is indeed a strong placebo effect when using um, any substance and injecting the glenohumeral joint. And this was noted because even the control group in these studies had pain uh, reduction scores that were significant. Well, what about prolotherapy and PRP injections? Well, you might be interested to find out that there are no significant mid or high level studies showing efficacy with prolotherapy or with platelet rich plasma when used for glenohumeral osteoarthritis. Botulinum toxin as an injectable to use for ameliorating glenohumeral joint dysfunction does have one published study that came out last year. In this study, 25 patients were given steroid injections, 25 patients were given Botox injections, and at the three-month follow-up point, the Botox 
patients had larger decreases in pain scores, 2.75 for the steroid group versus a 4.24 pain score decrease in the Botox group. In addition, the Botox patients were noted to have better motion. So this may be a potential um, clinical research uh, avenue to pursue. So the question is, why are we not considering BMC for arthritis? And the, the answer is because we have evidence that BMC is effective in other large joints, specifically in the knee. In this study published by uh, Chris Santino and others, uh, it was a very large study with 115 patients. 70% of those patients had rotator cuff tears, uh, up to one and a half centimeters. 30% of these patients had osteoarthritis. So it was interesting in their study, they had seven to 11 months average follow-up. The average SANE score that the patients reported was a 48% improvement, so nearly a 50% reduction in pain. They did measure cell counts, and their average cell count was 470 million, but they also noted that the cell count had no correlation to the outcomes noted in their study. The other confounding factor in the study was that the protocol included prolotherapy in the days before the actual procedure, and then the actual procedure was not only bone marrow concentrate, but also included platelet-rich plasma and platelet lysate. And as a result, it's difficult to assign clinical outcomes to a single intervention since there were technically four different interventions. In this study published last year in 2018, we have 121 patients and we have documented pain reduction scores from 8 down to 4.5. What's interesting in this study using BMAC is that these patients had medium to high grade osteoarthritis. So these were KL grade three and KL grade four knees. And at the nearly one year mark, the Oxford knee scores increased from 20 to 32, which was statistically significant. So how could this happen? How could bone marrow concentrate work? What is the basic biology that could account for this clinical improvement? Well, mesenchymal stem cells are pericytes as noted by, by many in the field and they're activated by chemokines or liberated during aspirations during our bone marrow aspirate procedures that are done in the office or in procedure rooms. The mesenchymal stem cell in vivo role is mostly paracrine. They secrete these multiple factors, and these factors influence other cells' activity and function. One of the other plasma proteins that may be very important in uh, the clinical effects we see when using bone marrow concentrate for osteoarthritis is alpha-2 macroglobulin. It's been well studied. In fact, it's, it's often a standalone procedure um, that is available commercially from some people uh, and in some clinics. Uh, what's nice when using bone marrow concentrate as our orthobiologic is that bone marrow has alpha-2 macroglobulin in it already. You don't need a separate procedure. Alpha-2 macroglobulin is a natural protease inhibitor it's found in platelet-poor plasma. It is found in higher concentration after centrifuging the bone marrow aspirate because once we centrifuge the BMA, we now have bone marrow plasma um, that we can dehydrate with a filter. Once we dehydrate the, the plasma, we now can significantly raise the concentration of alpha-2 macroglobulin and other plasma proteins. A2M slows the breakdown of articular cartilage surfaces and it inhibits arthritic progression in that fashion. It also has been studied and shown to bind up pro-inflammatory molecules like TNF-alpha, TGF-beta, and IL-1-beta. And so by binding up these pro-inflammatory molecules, A2M use results in less inflammation in the area where it's being um, placed. That usually relates clinically to less pain. It also means that the local cells are better able to repair the extracellular matrix in a less inflammatory environment. Another plasma protein that's clinically important and has been well studied and characterized is commonly known as IRAP or interleukin-1 receptor antagonist protein. Now, this is something that's been studied in the veterinary world as well. And Cassano and Fortier published um, in 2016 in the Journal of Knee Surgery Sports Traumatology and Arthroscopy. And what they noted was um, this nice chart on the right where you can see quantities or a, a quantification of IRAP in bone marrow aspirate and then in two different commercially uh, produced bone marrow concentrates. In both of those, the IRAP is significantly higher than in bone marrow aspirate, showing that concentrating and dehydrating the plasma does work, and it's also significantly higher than in PRP or in whole blood. 
So this may be a mechanism of action for BMC. By having these elevated levels of IRAP, um, we're able to change the inflammatory profile in the synovial fluid. So my current tips for a successful BMC glenohumeral joint injection. I always use posterior iliac crest bone marrow because the MSC concentration is higher in the more central bones. We don't use the sternum often in humans. Um, they do in veterinary medicine in horses, for example. In humans, I think the safest and um, most accessible um, uh, uh, structure to use that has the highest concentration of stem cells is the iliac crest. And so we use the posterior iliac crest because it's thicker, it's more um, reproducible, and we don't have to worry about the variable anatomy of the iliac crest tables in the anterior portion of that bone. Our aspirations are done under ultrasound guidance. There's certainly nothing wrong with using fluoroscopy, but I have ultrasound in my office and it's, it's clinically very easy to use to identify the posterior iliac crest. We aspirate 60 cc's of bone marrow for one joint. We can certainly aspirate more than 60. Um, when we aspirate that sort of volume, we're usually talking about a mesenchymal stem cell count anywhere from 25,000 on up to 35,000 mesenchymal stem cells once we centrifuge um, and dehydrate the plasma. We use a, a heparin as our anticoagulant. Uh, on balance, for 60 cc's of bone marrow, we're using somewhere between 12,000 and 18,000 units of heparin. Uh, using uh, that amount of heparin per 60 cc's has resulted in no clotting clinically in our experience. Uh, there are other protocols that are successful. Uh, this is just one example of what we do at the Texas Orthobiologic Institute. We always, always, always centrifuge because centrifuging has been shown internationally over many decades to increase mesenchymal stem cell count. There is simply not a way to increase MSC count um, uh, that is better than centrifuging. So we have published and honed our technique to maximize our bone marrow aspirate and then regardless of what that number is, we then centrifuge to further increase our MSC concentration. The other critical point is that it also allows us to remove the red blood cell content and it also allows us to have access to the plasma which we can then dehydrate to increase alpha-2 macroglobulin and IRAP concentrations, both of which have been shown to be clinically important. And that is the final point that I would make. We use our hemo filter after centrifuging because we do have good data suggesting that A2M and IRAP do play a role in human biology and in um, uh, synovial joint biology. So what do I tell my patients? Our goal is 50% reduction in pain for two to three years from a single injection. We've got publications from the United States and abroad documenting these types of results. Over the last three years, I have treated 79 patients with glenohumeral arthritis and rotator, rotator cuff tendinopathy, uh, no tears, however. We are pre uh, preparing this data for publication. And when we have these goals uh, stated up front, we're meeting them about 70% of the time at the one-year follow-up mark. So we are going to prepare this for publication. Uh, I am one of the founding editors of the uh, Biologic Orthopedics Journal. And uh, I would encourage all of you to, to have a look at that journal if you're interested in orthobiologics. So thank you for your attention. Hopefully this has answered a few questions and, and prompted some discussion. Thank you very much.